When Sophia was eight, she learned where her sister kept the keys to her diary. And then she wrote about it in her journal. November 1st, 2004. Dear journal, I know where the key to Colette's two diaries are. They're in the flower box behind her bed. May 6, 2005. But now I know not to invade her privacy. (laughs) It is none of my business. That's Sophia reading from her childhood journal. I'm Dan Meisner, and this, this, right now, is Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote As Kids. How are you feeling tonight? It's very, very, very nice to see you. This is a show where we go back in time to remember the good, the bad, and the awkward parts of growing up. This time, recorded live in Montreal, we have Love on the City Bus, Facts About Ghosts, a list of summertime grievances from a 10-year-old, and much more. This stuff is weird, it is wonderful, and like your sister's private diary, a lot of this stuff was never intended for you to hear. So think about who you were when you were a kid, and stick around. Do we have folks in the room who are users of public transit? Do we have bus people in the room? Yeah. Great enthusiasm for the bus. So in the year 1996, Danielle was in grade nine and took the city bus every single day. And one of the things that happens when you're in grade nine and you take the city bus every single day is that you fall in love with some of the other bus riders. Danielle fell in love with a guy named David who she never spoke to. And tonight we are going to hear a series of short private diary entries that describe the evolution of her feelings for David, the guy on the bus. Please welcome Danielle to the Grown Up Three Things They Wrote As Kids stage. So my uh, diary has an annotation on the front that says, please don't read this ever. And on the back it says, please don't read this even if I'm dead. (laughs) David Caillé, secondaire 4. QHS, short hair, skater. How to explain how I feel when he is there. Yesterday I saw him, but I said nothing. I called Ashley, who came to our school for a month. She told me I have a chance. She probably just said that to be nice, but it still felt good. Today she's going to talk to him, and if she really is my friend, she won't say everything. If not, tonight I will look mighty stupid. I'm so nervous. I almost gave up hope for David, but now I'm optimistic. I got a quick call from Ashley, and David told her he wanted to meet. It's stupid, really. He controls my life, my emotions. (laughs) Before, I was really depressed, and now I'm so high I won't sleep. I'm crushing. Time coordinated, home from Annika's at exactly the time when David's bus arrived. He was walking right behind me. I turned around and I didn't even smile. I can't believe myself. I hope I don't screw up tomorrow. Help, I love you, David. (laughs) David, 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 that's all I think about. I think I love him, but it's not really possible since I haven't even talked to him. (laughs) I'm setting myself up for so much heartbreak, but it's nice to dream. I wish everyone would just back off, though. It's so annoying. But I'm the one who told so many people. So next time, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I love you, David. It isn't working out at all. (laughs) Today, Ashley asked him for his number, and he said no. And she asked him if he would call me, and he said no. I'm really disappointed. I feel terrible. I wonder if I blew it when I acted like a stalker. (laughs) Bye till next time I fall in love again. Okay, and then we're going to fast forward a tiny bit. I have not had any news from David. He does this all the time. Parentheses, twice. So he's out completely of the picture. It's about time. Plus, Ashley told me that in her bio class, they dissected a rat. David cut off the tail and put it in his mouth. Gross. (laughs) About two days ago, I was on the bus with Marie-José Annika, and we saw the cutest guy ever. He was good looking, about 18, and he was carrying groceries. (laughs) So cute. Um, 
the kind of guy I'd really like to meet. <laughs> Speaking of, yesterday I went to have supper at Véronique's house and I met Frédéric, her cousin. He's really cute. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I like Fred. Maybe he could be a David Jr. God, it's so hard to study now. Fred, Fred, Fred. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about him. But the problem is, in my fantasies, not reality, if we went out together, not likely. I'm leaving for six weeks. Oh, I really like him. Finally, new love. Maybe now I'll stop babbling about David. Thank you. David, if you're out there, please get in touch. I would like to talk to you. When Jonah was 10, he wrote a list of things he was upset about. And just recently, Jonah's mom found the list and sent it to him, which is why he was able to share it at our Montreal show. Please welcome to our stage, Jonah. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind this list. I think I was very, very upset about these items. Uh, starts off pretty strong. Dog leash doesn't fit and isn't used. <laughs> Ping pong paddle sucks. Uh, this one has a star next to it, so you know it's extra important. Didn't see Frenchie. Frenchie was a nickname for a kid that I knew growing up. I'm from the States where speaking French might get you a nickname. Um, this one also has a star on it. Didn't go to San Francisco. <laughs> um, this one also has a star next to it. Camera roll I got didn't advance. <laughs> Camera broke when I needed it. <laughs> Nobody ate the fish I caught. <laughs> this one also has a star. Didn't play Axis and Allies. This is a board game for any of the board game fans out there. Um, didn't go to Ropes Course. Spent a long time on bad geocaches. <laughs> this one also has a star. Didn't get the snake. Um, didn't get to play bass for David. Didn't get to play game I wanted. Uh, had to go to bed early. Classic. <laughs> this one has a star. Quentin ruined Blockus, my cousin. It's, Blockus is another board game. Uh, no one likes Blockus. <laughs> another starred item. Didn't see Mr. Bean. Another starred item. Didn't go water skiing. And another starred item. Didn't see air show. Um, now, to, to round it up at the end, Rubik's Cube is slow again. <laughs> Bad video game I got. No bowling or movie. Dad doesn't take good care of me. <laughs> and finally, having a boring summer. <laughs> Thank you. Jonah, you had a rough childhood. <laughs> when Ainsley was in grade four, she wrote a speech for school. She claims it's an award winning speech. <laughs> The subject of her speech? Ghosts. Please welcome Ainsley back to our stage. This speech contains a lot of facts. <laughs> ghosts. What are ghosts and do they really exist? That's what a lot of people wonder. 
A ghost is usually the spirit or soul of someone who died and comes back to our world because they are unsettled and can't rest in the spirit world. Maybe they have something to say or do that they left unfinished. Someone who was murdered or died mysteriously may return as a ghost to seek revenge on their murderer. (laughs) Other ghosts return because they are attached to a place, such as the house where they were born or the house that they died in. A ghost may return by a group of people contacting it. Such such contacting is called a seance. During a seance, people sit around a table holding or touching hands. Each person thinks of the same ghost in its living form. (laughs) Sometimes the ghost or spirit will let the people know that it's there by moving objects or by making things disappear and then reappear. Not all ghosts are welcome. Some seances are held to get rid of ghosts. If a person has a mischievous or evil ghost living in their house, they will hold a seance with a medium to get rid of the unwelcome guest. Not all people would contact their friendly local ghostbusters to do the job. (laughs) There are many ghost stories from around the world, some true, some not. Many castles in England, Scotland, and Ireland are said to be haunted. Henry VIII, King of England in the 16th century, had his young wife Anne Boleyn beheaded because he wanted to marry someone else. It is said to this very day that Anne Boleyn has been seen by many people wandering the halls of Hampton Court Palace, holding her head underneath her arm. In present time, there is a house in Burlington, Ontario, that has driven many people away. It is haunted, lots of facts here, by the ghost of a woman named Elizabeth. When Elizabeth married a servant, her father was very angry and forbid Elizabeth to ever return home again. Now Elizabeth's ghost comes back, and many people have seen a very tall, sad woman wringing her hands and crying in the night. Seven years ago... A young girl rushed into her living room, returning home from shopping with her mother and baby sister. The girl came running out of the room, yelling to her mother that she didn't like that old lady in the rocking chair. The girl's mother didn't see anyone in the room, but the girl was insistent that she didn't want to go into that room until the old lady had left. Sometimes ghosts appear more to children than to adults. And when people ask me if I have ever seen a ghost, I tell them this story about what happened to me when I was two years old, seeing the old lady in the rocking chair. Some of my favorite readings at Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids are the ones where I'm not quite sure how I should feel, whether I should laugh or cry or maybe both. It's those readings, the ones that sit right on the edge. Those are the ones that tend to stick with me. Our next reader, Nisha, shared a couple of diary entries that she wrote when she was 15. We're going to hear some diary entries about getting drunk for the very first time. And we are also going to hear some entries that deal with her father and alcoholism. She promises it is okay to laugh. Please welcome back to our stage, Nisha. July 16th. It's my 15th birthday today. I slept in until 10.30, and I probably would have slept longer if my sister's so-called friend hadn't phoned. (laughs) I've been sleeping a lot lately, and I wonder if I have mono. (laughs) If that was the case, my whole family would have it too, because I always drink from the big juice jug. (laughs) Maybe I shouldn't anymore. My dad was arrested about a month ago for drinking and driving. It was a terrible experience for me because I didn't know where he was and it was two in the morning and my mom was at a birth working and he called and he was drunk and he asked for my mom and he told me his truck broke down but it was pretty obvious that it was a lie and the taxis were busy and so he told a cop about his problem and they told him not to drive and he did and was arrested. He's going to court on August 6th and will probably lose his license. He has been trying not to drink for a while, or forever, but that's been hard for him, 
and he's been so crabby lately, mostly to my mom. He tries to hurt her. October 2nd. My kitten is growing. She annoys me all the time. In the morning, she rubs her face and stinking ass in my face. (laughs) I sometimes call her Quick Quick, but she doesn't really have a name. Robert Barassa died today, and some crazy man is holding an old lady hostage. Isn't it always the men who do that? I've been doing a lot of thinking about whether or not we are born evil. Maybe we are born with a certain amount of instinctive good and evil, and maybe evil inflicts passion and desire, and good represents priorities and responsibilities. It is much more difficult to create good than evil. So many people resort to evil because it gives themselves more confidence, and it's easy. I think surroundings can influence how you present it or go about things, but only the individual can change who they are, if it is at all possible. After a meal cooked by Rachel's dad, we met Melissa and Sherry at McDonald's before we went to Ben's for my first party where I was drunk for the first time. There was tequila, very strong, which is fun because you have to lick your arm and put salt on it. Then you lick the salt, drink the tequila, and then suck a lemon. I had two of those. Then I had a raspberry cooler and some more tequila and orange juice and some Coke with something else in it. (laughs) I kind of like being drunk, but I will never become an alcoholic. I really must promise myself that. I shouldn't have told my parents where I went because I know they're really wondering what went on there and I don't want to lie, but I bet they're going to read this journal and see what they can find out. Melissa got really super drunk. She puked and had to lay down upstairs in ben, where Ben's boarding buddy stays. There was a pot plant in the closet, but no seeds. Some people were throwing around knives <laughs> and doing a bit of hash. Uh, I'll only do pot, never hash, even though it has no effect on me. <laughs> there are two roads. One is straight and smooth and leads to a clear blue lake. The other is not straight. It has many bends and the mud is thick. This is the dream my mom had. They were driving, my mom and dad, to the lake to swim. But my dad wanted to choose the muddy road. They went down this path and they got stuck. Again and again, my dad gets a path, yet he chooses the hard one. Yesterday, I was reading on the couch. My mom was the only one still eating. I suddenly felt great sadness. I asked her if she was sad. She said she was sad, but she couldn't discuss it with me. I begged and pleaded until finally she agreed. She said that Dad had bought beer and vodka and brought it to the job site with him and got seriously drunk. My dad has been painting this house in town. He's been working 12-hour night shifts. Recently, he's been the only one there at night, so he brought vodka and beer and he intoxicated himself. He also was sick from the paint fumes because he was painting in the closets. He seriously poisoned himself because he was puking all of yesterday. And until my mom told me, I thought it was just paint fumes. But it sickens me to think if he was clumsy and made painting mistakes. (laughs) He He could have been caught and he could be fired and totally ruin his reputation and he will never get good jobs again. So I was feeling pretty sick last night, both with the news and all the sugar I ate. Also, he was puking all day. I suppose it's his own fault, but I'd really like to know why he does it to himself. I'd really like to know, and so would my mom. May 8th. Rachel's having a party tomorrow. I don't know if I'll go. No one's really going, and there'll be no booze. (laughs) I don't know what's gotten into me. I sure have come a long way from last year, man. Thank you. I wanted to share these entries as a sort of homage to my 15-year-old self to acknowledge her private struggle that she wasn't able to talk about then to anyone except for within these pages. Um, And also revisit some of the things that 
she was thinking about then. You know, these are kind of big questions like, are people born evil? Um, why do people do bad things? Why do people choose the hard road when a better road can sometimes seem so obvious from the outside? Um, I kept so much contained then, and it actually felt pretty good to share these entries with others, even though I'm sure that my 15-year-old self would be absolutely horrified at the idea. You know, if I could talk to her, to my teenage self, about alcohol and drugs, um, you know, I would tell her that she's right to be cautious. Um, I don't think alcohol is necessarily inherently bad, but it can, it can certainly derail lives, as, you know, I saw firsthand with my dad, and it, it can be quite sneaky, so it's always good to be just checking in with yourself. Um, am I in control? Is this, is this too much? Is everything okay? You know, it's, it's fine to experiment and have fun, but, you know, you don't also have to feel like you have to do anything just because your friends are doing it. So overall, um, trust yourself, have fun, be responsible, and important to keep in mind, never drink on an empty stomach. Our next reader is Kaylee, and Kaylee is going to share some diary entries. These were written at 12 years old, and we're going to hear one that has to do with the first boy who had a crush on her. We're also going to hear an entry about losing touch with a school friend in elementary school. Please welcome to our stage, Kaylee. Okay. Dear Summer, September 19th. Summer is the name of my diary, by the way, not a person. (laughs) The last time I wrote were so long ago, I decided to write about the crush that someone has on me, the first person ever. He told me last week, I don't like him. I imagine the first person would be someone I liked, but I shouldn't think like that because life isn't like that because life's not fair. That's the way everything is. It never changes. (laughs) It sucks. If one time life was fair, it would be a miracle because that's the way things are. Scott likes me. Ryan's older brother. I'm so embarrassed. He's like six foot and in grade nine, and he's 14 years old. That's so weird. He likes a short, much younger person. I'm so confused. Maybe I should tell you how he told me. It just started out as an I'm so ugly convo on MSN Messenger. (laughs) LOL. And he said I wasn't ugly, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty, not ugly, blah, 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 and whatever. Then he wanted to know if I was shallow, but no, I'm not really shallow. Anyway, then he told me and put a little rose icon. Oh, geez, I hope no one reads this. Dear Summer, September 21st. I hate being 12. Life sucks. It is so confusing. I'm lost in confusion and frustration. Perfection is the devil. If you're perfect, you're evil. (laughs) If you're not, you're never good enough. Okay, I just wrote that, and it is absolutely true. (laughs) High school sucks, especially grade 7. I'm lost in a world of snobs and nerds, loners and strange people. Nobody is normal. No one is ugly. What am I writing? Okay, I need to calm down big time so much. (laughs) At school, we're doing an all about me project slash autobiography slash everything. Doesn't the teacher know that I have a personal life that is none of her business? Duh. (laughs) Just kidding. There's nothing. (laughs) What else is new? I have to find a good hobby so I don't get bored. 
Well, I like singing, but I only want to practice when no one is home, which is never, so I can't let them hear me, not until I get good. And I can't unless I practice, but if they're here, I can't. So I've got a little bit of a major problem. My hand hurts. Anyway, I'm going to eat now. Yuck. Gross little portion of ravioli. Gross. Ugh. I ate like nothing, and I feel like a pig, though. I don't know why. Dear Summer, September 22nd. It's 10.10. I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I can't, thinking too much again. I can't help it. I feel sorry and bad about Scott. Still, I can't get over anything. It's amazingly stupid, I know. It sucks. I want to read Harry Potter. (laughs) I want to write a book, a beautiful song. I want to be a singer in an all-girl band with my friends, but I want to be lead singer. (laughs) I want so many things I can't have now. Scott wants me, that's all I know. (laughs) Who doesn't wish their life was like a fairy tale? There is no such thing as perfect or a perfect life. And the world revolves around the S-U-N, just to let you know, just in case you didn't know. (laughs) Dear Summer, November 4th, so we're jumping ahead a little bit. It has been too long since I wrote, and my feelings are bubbling up, and I want it to stop. I've heard from Mackenzie just today with her new friends. I see that puberty has taken her, and she has changed so much. (laughs) But nope, not me. I am the same old geek who has not gone through puberty, so I write this poem to my dear once old friend Mackenzie. We were always together, friends forever. Almost like Siamese twins, but now we're growing our own limbs. (laughs) I hate to say goodbye. I might just cry. We may never see each other again, but we'll have to wait until then. This is my final goodbye because this friendship has died. (laughs) Dear Summer, November 5th. So today was fun. Me and Mackenzie are going to the dance. Yep, I'm talking to her now. (laughs) Thank you. That is Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids. Our show was recorded live at La Sala Rosa in Montreal and was produced by Jenna Meisner. Olivia Nashmi is our associate producer. Our music is by Poddington Bear and Lullatone. Our closing theme is Oh Dear Diary by Sloan. If you enjoyed this episode of Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids, tell somebody about it. This show is and has always been a word of mouth kind of thing. So if you know somebody who would enjoy the show, help spread the word. I'm Dan Meisner. Thanks for listening. like a stalker. <laughs>